But though I have wept and fasted, wept and prayed, though I have seen my head grown slightly bold, uh, brought in upon a platter, and no prophet, and here's no great matter. So here, in the last few lines, I'm in the middle of the stanza 12. Actually, Mr. Proofrog or the poet T.S. Eliot referred biblical elements or biblical, he brought biblical references here. That is, um, there you just notice, I am no prophet. Okay, here actually, like Jesus Christ is referred here and also the resurrection. Okay, the case of resurrection also alluded here. So the person who actually baptized uh, Jesus Christ, Risa alayhi salam, uh, and he actually fall into, into a rage or wrath of a, of a daughter or a queen, okay, of a queen during that era. So the queen actually asked her head to, uh, to be brought before her on a platter, okay. That means a cut head. When a cut a matter, a plate a good at the shamna and a june, bolishly, a commenter, we shall see loge or the jay lukta, git jate, ba upasana loe, Jesus Christ came baptized curricillo. So Taki Shishamoka Queen, when a jack in a bureau the chiller gave the name Bisha Dormi Visha, but the Dormota Vinna Shilipot Terrig Dormu, Jargon Shiragan Nitaway, Bolishly Joe looked her matha michai. Tarkata Mata, okay. Cut it so on a platter. When at a plate, the Kata Mata and in the original population. So, Tamane, why actually these referred here? Biblical elements here. I am no prophet. I can prove from Mr. Provix saying that I am not a prophet. But he's actually uh, act like, acts like prophet. And here's no great matter. Okay. So, Tamane, uh, that means uh, he actually. So scared that, uh, like a uh, criminal who is going to be sentenced, uh, death sentence, going to have death sentence. Some other fashi ashami motu director situation was. So, Mr. Proofrock is like uh, scared, like a criminal or like a person. Uh, who is actually violated the social or cultural or religious laws and his punishment will be death sentence, something like that. And he is using this comparison to express very trivial or simple okay, matter, which is expressing his love, uh, feeling of love. So I have seen the moment of my greatness flicker uh, and I have seen the eternal footman hold my coat and sneaker. And in short, I was afraid. So footman here, actually eternal footman means, I mean, he's imagining himself as a very uh, sophisticated, luxurious and rich man. And he has an attendant with him. And always he's attending to him. I mean, an assistant, okay. কল্পনা করছে আই হ্যাভ সিন দা মোমেন্ট অফ মাই গ্রেটনেস ফ্লিকার অথবা সেখানে বলতে যাচ্ছে যে অলরেডি হি ইজ এ রিচ ম্যান বাট স্টিল হি ইজ এক্সপ্রেস টু দ্যাং so he achieved so many things in life, money, fame, but he can express his love affair. I mean, he hasn't get the love of a young lady. So throughout the whole poem, actually T.S. Eliot is trying to tell us that modern people are dealing with trivial things, though they are thinking that they are doing great things. They are creative, they are innovative, they, and they have established so many great, great things, but they are being deprived of the spiritual blessings, which is love, affection, relationship, trust, okay? 
and religious faith okay so these things actually are absent in the modern modern men or modern women so which is expressed by a simple matter or idea which is love affair of a young of a middle aged person who is um, titled as mr proofrock alfred j alfred proofrock so um, would it have been orchid after all after the calves the marmalade the tree among the porcelain among some talk of you and me would it have been worthwhile to have beaten off the matter with a smile so again he expresses hesitation repeated the same thing here i mean after the snacks whether he would express or not his inner thoughts of love and romance with a smile so to say i am lazarus come from the dead come back to tell you all i shall tell you all like, so here also again there is a biblical reference mane bible theke ekta reference the lazarus lazarus is a poor a uh, good lady or female who actually uh, resurrected from his death okay and he visited the heaven and then again he came back to earth to tell the people uh, if they uh, do the good deeds they they can go to heaven okay so that's why to inspire the people to do the good deeds this we man though he uh, sorry though she was poor but she was resurrected and and she was selected for being a, a dweller of heaven okay so lazarus so here mr proofog is comparing himself to the lady lazarus that he will die as already he has reached the middle age so and very soon he will get to the old age and he will die and again he will come back from death and alive being alive he will tell the young lady that he loves okay so that is a very comparison between a great thing with the trivial matters so that's an irony as well if one settling a pillow by her head should say that is not what i mean at all that is not it at all so again mr proofog is confusing the audience like us that he says uh settling a pillow by her head that means carrying a woman not his intention his intention is something else that why that's why he is saying that that is not what i mean at all that is not it at all okay so he is again and again confusing people actually what is inside his mind going on okay though he is trying to express his desire basically desire in various aesthetic way using various words and phrases metaphors and similes okay and personifications but again and again he fails to express like he is a coward is okay or he is scared or afraid to uh, deal with a very simple or easy matter that is expressing his love uh, thought of love and romance so that's the end of this week 10s life class so part 3 will be discussed the next week in the next lesson okay thank you for being with me so if you have any question or query you can ask me now dear participants have you got any queries or question my sir list. one question here that uh, yes sure sir, please. sir uh, that is the dramatic monologue or uh, interior monologue mm -hmm. <clears throat> you discussed the uh, uh, interior monologue uh, just to uh, one person is needed to uh, ventilate his uh, thinking and his dramatic monologue needs two persons but in this lesson we think that uh, one uh, person is persons. a two form who is uh, psychologically ventilate his opinion to himself Uh -huh. But uh, some writers or some books, so it is uh, um, depicted that uh, it also is a dramatic monologue because he is thinking he himself, but uh, he created he, uh, he himself is another person's to uh, to throw his opinion 
uh, but surely he's made, he made uh, another person that he is uh, making his decision, making his thinking to share uh, mm -hmm. the virtual persons. And they are making such kind of things as a dramatic monologue. But uh, practically, we see that it is a, uh, it is a discussion matters only uh, in one person. That is, proof work is uh, simply persons, and he is making such kind of thinking to himself. So it is interior monologue. Mm -hmm. And if you clear these things, thank you, sir. OK. So we can address this poem as dramatic monologue and interior monologue, both. OK? But more specifically and more closely, we can address this poem as interior monologue, because uh, there we actually can't find any presence of a listener. Actually, who is listening to Mr. Proofrock's thoughts or actually what he is saying? Actually, who is listening? We, we can't find any listener here. That's why, more specifically, we can address this poem in the genre of interior monologue rather than dramatic monologue. But generally, we can address this poem as dramatic monologue. Is it clear? So both we can address. But if we more specifically um, address this, then we need to say that it is an interior model. I think uh, you have got the answer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Clear. So thank you very much for being with me with patience and your time. OK, so see you and talk to you next week with new lesson. I'm in the third part of the same poem and also the last part. OK, so then I'm in the week after the next we will uh, discuss with another poem dylan thomas another poet i mean dylan thomas okay so goodbye and good night